Hello kids, Miss Shockley again. Today the video is going to be over relationships in an ecosystem and changes in an ecosystem. But prior to the new information, there'll be a few slides that have a review of ecology from seventh grade. So please make sure you get that information in your notes too to study for the STAR test. Make sure you remember the levels of organization. Review the process of photosynthesis and what is included when photosynthesis takes place. Be able to define and give examples of a food chain or a food web. So on to relationships and ecosystems. An organism may play more than one role in an ecosystem as you can tell when you look at a food web or a food chain at times. And when it's and according to its location in the food web, a predator may prey to another organism. There are relationships between organisms in an ecosystem. Some are beneficial and some are harmful as a parasite and host. In a habitat, is where these uh, organisms live and that's what determines the ecosystem that they actually live in terrestrial marine freshwater and freshwater ecosystems based on these pictures you can see here the producer in these pictures is the grass that is being eaten by the cow and the tortoise the prey predator relationships that we see here is the bear catching the fish and the shark going for a seal and the parasite to host the parasite is the mosquito and the tick, which the host is a human, which you can see the human skin there with the hair. So, what is an ecosystem? An ecosystem is all of the living and non-living things in an area, and those things are considered to be biotic factors and abiotic factors. Biotic factors are living things such as plants, animals, and are part of an ecosystem. The abiotic factors are the non-living factors in an environment such as water, climate, and soil. Here is a list of some abiotic and biotic factors that influence ecosystems. And any changes in the quality or quantity of light, water, or range of temperature or soil composition impact both the biotic and abiotic factors in an ecosystem. If there is a limited amount of either one of these, it can lead to a competition among populations in an ecosystem. And any change in population, whether it's positive and or negative, it affects interacting populations in that ecosystem. Existing populations within an ecosystem are greatly impacted by the introduction of a new species. New species can out-compete native species in an area. Here in Texas, we are currently on um, an alert, as you can see from the picture in the, on this slide, from an invasive species called zebra mussels. They are infesting our lakes and can be damaging to our water supply, the supply of fish to those that do fish, and they can be carried from one lake to another by getting into the water systems of the boats. These are a few vocabulary words that you do need to know. They may have been left out of this video. They may be included in the video. But the fact is you still need to know them for the STAR test. Please make sure that you review all the material in the video. Watch it more than once if you need to. Pause, rewind, whatever it is you need to do. But make sure you get your notes done. I hope everyone has a great weekend. And remember, ecology is probably one of the funnest units that we do. So enjoy.